Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest and welcome to another financial year 23 result video. Fortunately, because where we are in the financial year, March, we're also able to look at these companies' half year results. And we're going to do exactly that with today's company called Calix. I always get the ticker code for this company mixed up with CTI Logistics. So the ticker code of this company is CXL. I always think always thinks it's CLX, which is a T code for CTI Logistics. A really interesting company, particularly when it comes to this company's technology. And I do hope this company, Calix, is successful in the future. Just because I hope they're successful doesn't necessarily mean they will be. So I'll talk about what this company does. Uh, and there are red flags around this company. And the main red flag I have in regards to Calix is just the fact that they're more of a story stock right now. But they are on the way, maybe not a long way, to proving their business model. But they're not profitable. Uh, they're burning through a lot of cash. And that is my main problem with Calix. But they're not a real story stock because this company does have a technology and they are making money through their technology. So not a pure play story stock because those pure play story stocks have zero revenue. They're just a story. At least Calix has something, however small it is, to back up their story. So let's have a look at this company's um, technology because when we look at their financials, to be honest with you, nothing much to talk about just there. One of the more amusing things I find about Calix is just their slogan, Mars is for quitters. Now I understand what they're trying to get at in terms of this phrase, and it is amusing. Now, I view it a little bit differently. I don't think we are um, going to Mars because we're quitting Earth. We're just explorers. At heart, we are explorers. It's like going back to Magellan um, and saying, why are you quitting Portugal? Just stick to Portugal. Why are you exploring the world? Uh, stay in Portugal and let's fix the problems in Portugal. We are explorers at heart. And the whole reason we're going to Mars, we went to Moon, and more than likely, uh, over time, within the next few centuries, we'll be exploring further into our universe is because we're explorers. So I find that uh, phrase amusing. Mars is for quitters. But uh, I sort of understand where they're coming from, but I don't absolutely believe in that. Now, Calix is definitely an environmental technology company. Uh, and they are developed some really intriguing technology, which I'll talk about in the next um, slide. But if you had to ask me what Calix does, I'll just say that it's all about carbon capturing or carbon mitigation. That's exactly what Calix is doing or trying to do. And you can definitely think, if you have the ability to think long term, that this is a significant growth area. So this is Calix's four platform technology. I actually did watch a video. Um, I think it was either the CEO or founder. I think it was a founder, but maybe not the founder of the technology because what he said was he did know the founder of this technology and the technology this guy had was really intriguing. Now, I did have to look at a few videos and um, read a few pamphlets or presentations from the company to get some sort of understanding what they're trying to do here. So what they do is they get these minerals um, that are traditionally high intense, when it comes to um, CO2, high intensity um, CO2 emitters. Uh, one a prime example is cement. And what they do is they grind that material uh, to really small um, sizes. And we're talking about one hundredth or one thousandth of a millimeter in size. And they put them into this uh, big tube and then they flash heat the minerals. Uh, temperatures rising, if I remember the video correctly, rising to about um, 900 degrees centigrade or something. And those trapped gases within those minerals, uh, they um, bubble out of the particles and they create highly porous honeycomb um, like structures in the particles. And Calix's technologies allows for the direct separation of CO2, allowing it to be used for carbon um, dioxide reduction. Uh, in in particularly those traditionally carbon dioxide intensive industries. So definitely lime and cement. So you see 
this company mentioned when we talk about a lime and cement production. Now, the three key benefits that I did see on their website, they mentioned the benefits of this technology. And that's one of the things I wanted to know. What are the benefits? So um, materials produced by this particular process are proving to have similar properties to highly active nanomaterials without the safety concerns and high costs, but with all the benefits. This allows for applications in advanced battery materials, biotechnology and water. CO2 capture mentioned here, that's also a key benefit and also renewable energy ready. So Calix's technologies facilitates mineral industrial processing to transition towards renewable energy while maintaining flexibility with process integration or integration and energy source. And this particular slide is from a presentation the company released, Bell Otter, Bell Otter, Bell Potter Unearthed, February 2024. So not that long ago, just talks about all the applications. So cement and lime, and you might hear another company called Lelac. So this company, I think, has a um, some sort of relationship with Lelac, and they've released a few announcements in the past in regards to this relationship. So cement and lime, direct air capture, lithium, the which even name dropped Pilbara minerals there alumina and iron and steel. Now, when it comes to companies like Calix, I typically don't really focus on the company's half year or full year results. Now, many companies like Calix that are highly loss making typically also release um, quarterly results, but Calix doesn't do that. So we can't see how this company is performing on a quarterly basis. So really all we do have is their half year and full year results. But even then, the main thing is I'm lingering or looking at when it comes to Calix's half year full year results is any growth in revenue. I really want to see revenue growing. That is the first thing. And at this point, the most important thing when it comes to this particular company, they really have to grow their revenue. The other thing I'd probably look at is gross margins. So I want to see revenue increasing, gross margins also increasing. And the third thing I'm going to look at is spending and i want to see revenue growing at a greater rate than spending and i'll talk about that when we look at the company's half year results so if we look at the company's financial year 23 results only 18.6 million dollars of revenue so fairly low and that was only up one percent from the previous year so that is a little bit of a problem right there slow growth in revenue loss of 22.1 million gross margins fairly low at 33.3 percent and the company was burning and is still burning through a lot of cash. Operating cash flow negative 17.3 million and free cash flow negative 27.1 million. However, at the end of the financial year, they had plenty of cash, 74.1 million. But if the company continues to burn through the cash like they are doing, then eventually they will have to raise capital. And possibly that might be a little bit of a problem. Because when you look at the valuation of this company, and you can see the valuation of this company dropping just by looking at the chart. In fact, I prepared this video about just over a month ago, and I actually had to change the market cap of this company because it had dropped 33% since when I start from time um, when I started this particular video, which was just over a month ago. So the share price of this company is in a well-defined downtrend. The valuation keeps falling. So if they do have to raise capital in that sort of situation, they're going to further dilute shareholders by a significant amount. But the company did release the half-year results in February. And there was one thing, actually a couple of things to like about the half-year results. So what I've done here in this particular slide is look at their revenue in half year increments and also their gross margins. So what I wanna see is revenue increasing. You'll notice from 2020 all the way through to 2023, the last half of financial year 23, revenue not doing anything, flat. Uh, and that was a question I had about this company. Revenue flat, where's that growth? But we have seen a possible sign that revenue is starting to pick up, up to 12.2 million in the first half of financial year 24. And we also see an expansion of gross margins increasing from below 30% one year ago to 48.3%. So those are two good signs moving forward for Calix. But there is another thing I want to see, and that is the difference between the increase in spending and the increase in revenue. So we're gonna have a look at that uh, later in the video. Maybe the next slide, I can't quite remember. 
not not quite the next slide. I'm not sure why I've got to these particular slides in the order. This slide may have uh, belonged to uh, the previous slide. But anyway, uh, shares on issue 181.4 million. Talked about I had to change the mark cap of this company because the share price actually had dropped from about $2.10 to $1.43. So the mark cap of this company is still $259 million, but it has dropped a lot over the past few years. This was a definite story stock on the ASX, a lot of interest in what this company was doing. And I think that interest or that hype was a little bit too much when the share price was as high as about $10 or something ridiculous like that. $94.2 million of equity. It probably wouldn't really focus on equity at this point, but that is dropping. And return equity is not applicable because they have no return. Return invested capital, not applicable. They have no return. Dividend yield, not applicable because this company has no dividend. In fact, they're not even profitable. And that's one of the reasons why I don't really linger on this company's half-year, full-year results. But because they don't release the quality results, I do want to look at how their profit is growing, if it's growing at all, and also the gross margins and their spending. Everything else, I probably skip. Now, back to the company's half-year results. So we have growing revenue. Companies also seeing their gross margins increase. And interesting, in this particular um, page within their presentation, if I remember correctly, the revenue and other income was actually 16.3 million, up significantly from last year, 12.7 million. But they also included their grants and other income, which was 4.1 million. I ignore grants and other income. I just focus on the revenue that the company has produced. So Bindesia revenue, 9.9 million, up from 8.5 million. And Lilac revenue, which is cement and lime, up to 2.3 million. And that was a significant increase from last year because only 0.2 million. So overall revenue, if you look at those two, up uh, about three to four million dollars. But the most important thing is comparing the revenue growth to expenditure. So in the last half of this particular table, they have operating expenses, and that grew from thirteen point one million to nineteen point eight. So it almost increased by about fifty percent. So sales and marketing increased by or well, from four point three to five point six. R and D significantly increased from five point five million to ten point two. Now. Research and development might have benefits for the longer term, but those benefits might be five years away. I don't know, but it is interesting that the research and development has almost doubled from last year and administration increased from 3.3 million to 4 million. So a significant increase in spending, and that increase in spending was actually greater than the revenue. So this company was actually more loss making in this half year than the previous half years. So $9.8 million loss in this particular half year. I'm going to ignore that gain on investment in the joint venture, 3.4 million. Um, that's not, in my opinion, that's not a, a operational loss or profit. So I'm going to ignore that. So this company is nowhere close at this point in time or getting towards a really important inflection point of creating cash in their business. And when a company is able to create cash or generate cash in their business, they become self-funding or very close to becoming self-funded and let they're less likely to go back to equity markets to raise more capital. And I don't think Calix is just there right now. However, I do find their um, technology intriguing. So I definitely am close, keeping a close eye on Calix, but the chart is another red flag. So let's have a look at the chart right now. Funnily enough, for some reason, I deleted the chart. And maybe the reason I deleted the chart is because the chart looks really ugly right now. And the other funny thing is, when I put the TIG code into TradingView, I went straight to CLX. For some reason, I just want to want this company to have a TIG code CLX. It just makes sense because of the name, Calix. But it's CXL because CLX, again, is being taken or own, is owned by CTI Logistics. I just wish they could change. Uh, anyway, that's just me. Uh, so this is a chart going back to the start of 2022. And the whole reason I want to go that far back is because that's when the share price of Calix reached its high of just shy of $10. So $10 in April of 2022. Now, if the company hasn't done any cup raising since then, that means the share or the market of this company would have been um, around about, uh, well, over $1 billion. In fact, I could confirm that right now. Was the market cap of this company over $1 billion? Now, it might take me a little bit of time to do that, and I've decided not to do that. But uh, the market cap and the hype around this company was pretty high two years ago. So we are talking about two years ago when the share price was that high. So share price of this company has fallen 
from around about $10 all the way down to $1.40. And this is a well-defined downtrend. A lot of negative sentiment in this company right now. And the share price is at a long term low at dollar 41 you can even tell when i did the prepared this video it wasn't that long ago so about a month ago the share price was um reached a high of about two dollars and forty cents so what's happened since then to drive the share price down i don't know but this is what happens when there is a lot of negative sentiment in a company share price just keeps on going down and we have no idea where the low is going to be if there is a low share price of this company could keep on dropping particularly if the company never gets to profitability so what you want to wait for here is some sign of a shift in sentiment in the company. So you want to see that shift in sentiment because if there's no shift in sentiment, share price will keep on dropping. And even the value investors are well out of the picture here because the company is not profitable. Value investors want to see some value when it comes to uh, valuation metrics and valuation metrics needs profit or at least operating cash flow or free cash flow. And Calix has none of those. So probably the best way to talk about Calix, it's all about your conviction in regards to management and also the technology. I don't have very high conviction in regards to this company just yet. I need some proof of concept. They do have revenue, but I need further proof. And the share price could halve from here. Share price could go down 90% from here. And potentially, even at that point, it might look expensive. The next five companies I'm doing in this particular series, and we are getting towards the end because I'm just having a look at uh, the rest of the companies I have to do. I'm just going to add them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 15 more companies to Joe. Oh, Judo Capital is one of them. Uh, Swoop is another one. That's interesting. Self Wealth, HZN. What's HZN? Uh, PPE, people in. Environmental Group, a DTO, A1M, AIC Minerals or Minings, AVA Risk Group, and RXH. Is that Rewardle? I don't know. So there's one I didn't know, HZM. Anyway, so next five companies I'm doing in this series are Sonic Healthcare, ReadyTech, AGL, Clinubel, which uh, share price has just popped up because they're doing a share buyback, which is really understandable. And then Beam Communications, a company I followed for quite a few years and the share price is at an almost long-term support level our company has been on the cusp of being profitable free cash flow um, um what's the other one operating cash flow positive but hasn't quite reached that point where i think they're going to grow significantly it's just um what all the services and the products they are producing i just don't see much of a growth trajectory for that particular company i could be mistaken Maybe it's just me, but look out for those videos within the next month or so. And that is all I have for this video looking at Calix's financial year 23 results. Not a lot of lingering on these results or even on their half year results. I'm more intrigued with this company's technology and whether the company can meet the potential of their technology. That's probably the most intriguing thing I have in regards to Calix. But up until then, up until they are able to realize the potential. I'm out of the picture, but I will be following the fortunes of this company over the next few months, potentially over the next few years. If you are a shareholder of this company, I'd love to hear your opinion. Why are you a shareholder? Are you convinced that the technology of this company is going to bring in the mullah over the next few years? Or maybe you think it's going to be longer than that, but you're willing to wait. I'd love to hear your opinion on this company. So leave your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.